So I'm going to show you what I did to light this prototype ghost papercraft model uh, to light the eye like this. So uh, first of all, in order to get the light to transmit through the iris, I had to do something a little bit different than what's in the instructions for the ghost this ghost build. This uh, this ghost has you if you're not going to light, you just put a piece of blue paper behind the iris to just kind of give it, you know, that blue effect. But there's no that that blue paper, blue cardstock is not going to transmit light very well. So I had to do something that would transmit light well. And you could use something like thin paper, something, you know, like, I don't know, like vellum or just copy paper. If it's thin enough to actually pass the light through and give it the color you want, go ahead and use it. But I would experiment first. Um, so what I ended up doing was using some blue plastic and uh, it was just like grocery bag plastic and very thin, the bright color of blue that I liked. I don't remember if I doubled up. I don't think I did actually. I think I just had one one layer of that and of course the, the lens or the iris is cut out of uh, black cardstock. So I cut that and then um, that that thin blue plastic is obviously very thin, has no structure to it, um, so I needed to support it. So I cut out a, uh, the, I used the, the parts template to cut out the, what I call the light blocker or the light shield with a diamond cut out of the middle. And I sandwiched the piece of blue plastic between that um, light shield piece and the black cardstock iris. Um, and the light shield I cut out of chipboard tend to be nice and sturdy and then I also cut out little holes around because the the glue that I was using just regular craft glue wasn't going to bond to that uh, blue plastic I had to cut out little holes all the way around the perimeter that I could actually put some glue there and so the two pieces of the the black cardstock on one side on the front and the the chipboard light shield on the back would be able to glue together through those holes but then they would hold that uh, blue plastic in place and I made sure that it was nice and tight and then glued together so there weren't any wrinkles or anything in the blue plastic <coughs> as much as I could and then uh, the blue plastic I liked the color that was coming through but the it wasn't diffusing the light really at all you could see the LEDs um, shining through. You can see the distinct LEDs and I didn't really like that look so I wanted to add some diffusion to it. So I tried a few things. I tried some vellum. I tried just some plain white copy paper. Uh, what I settled on was actually just some folded up uh, like nasal, nasal tissue, facial tissue. Um, I cut a little piece of that and then I just varied the layers until I got the right amount of diffusion and um, that's one thing you have to always have to consider is the more you diffuse the light, the dimmer the light gets, right? Because it's scattering in all different directions. So less of it makes it through to your eyes. And so there's a balance between getting the right level of diffusion that you want versus getting the right brightness that you want. And there's a trade-off, so you've got to figure that out. And so I was able to get something that I liked. Um, as you can see, hopefully you can see on camera here, um, it's not perfectly diffused. There's you can actually see some bright and dim spots in the blue. And that's just from the, the cluster of LEDs in the back, um, right behind that. But it's diffused enough that you can't tell those are distinct LEDs. Um, but there's still some structure to light. And I like structure to the, the lighting. And I like this look. I think it looks cool to kind of be able to see some vague shapes behind there. Um, but if you don't like that, you'll, you can play with it, get some more diffusion out of that by just trying different materials, adjusting the thicknesses of things you're using. You should be able to get something that's pretty good. Um, one thing that also helps the diffusion is having the light further back. If the, if the light from the LEDs spreads out more, then you're less likely to get distinct bright spots. And so you can vary the depth. You don't have a lot of room to work with in this model, unfortunately. You can only go back as far as the depth of the model. But um, that is, there, there's a little bit of play in that. So anyway, so um, 
Okay, so I was using the tissue to diffuse the light, and obviously tissue doesn't have any structure of its own either, so I also had to support that with the chipboard light shield. And I think what I did was I just sandwiched it just between, kind of did something similar where I cut out like a small um, bit of the tissue paper, and but left some spaces for the paper to bond to paper instead of having to you know, glue through the tissue paper and just use some like regular white cardstock or copy paper as a backer to sandwich the tissue between the chipboard light shield and and I, and I cut out that same diamond shape right so really the only thing that was in the light path was the tissue paper for diffusion and the blue plastic for the color um, and then I glued all that together and uh, glued it into the model and and I, I did testing all the way through just to make sure I got the right color and the right light diff brightness and diffusion that I wanted and I, I settled on something that I liked so you can do what I did if you can find some blue plastic like that thin blue plastic it works great um, or you can experiment and find your own thing now onto the lighting this is another thing you can either do what I did or you can do your own thing but what I did was I got I found these uh, cheap little flashlights um, either at the dollar store or at Walmart. I don't remember exactly where I got these. It was a while ago. But basically there's just nine white LEDs in there. And they've got a little uh, latching push button on the back. I didn't end up using that. I like the slide toggle switch better. And but basically what it is, I just scavenged the lighting out of here, and that's what you see there is what is actually behind the iris on this ghost. Now, this battery pack would be super convenient if it would work, but it doesn't work. It's just too long. It takes up the entire, the entire width of the inside the model, and it doesn't leave any space for the actual lighting itself, because the lighting is kind of deep. It's probably about that deep and so the batteries would stick out the back quite a ways which is a shame because I mean these are just so convenient so I had to figure something else out for the batteries we'll get to that in a minute okay after yanking all these internal pieces out turns out this <laughs> I remember this actually screws off down here it's glued so I had to crank on it break that glue but that was the only way to get that out of there but that's what we're looking for right there so, I don't know if I said this or not, but it was a couple of, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, that I found these. So, if you can find something exactly like this, perfect. Um, if not, then find something similar, hopefully. But basically, um, I didn't end up using this piece, I don't think. You know what, I have to check my photos. I might have, actually. It's basically nine LEDs. You know eight in a ring and then one in the middle so if you can find something that's about that size that'll fit in a one inch diameter this is a one inch diameter whore, board hole right here so um, if, and, you know there's a little bit of room there but not much so you want to find something that'll fit a one inch diameter hole and yeah so that's it so um, this is what I ended up using. I took the spring off because it you know, I didn't really need it for the type of battery system I set up. And then I just soldered the wires directly to the contacts on the back here. And uh, so I inserted the lighting into the hole. And I adjusted the depth until it looked about right. I didn't. I don't think I had it all the way at the front. I think I had it back a little bit, which gave me... Uh, some room to put some hot glue around here kind of in like a like a fillet weld just to kind of hold that in place so it wouldn't uh, push forward and it also gave me a little bit of space between the lighting and the lens or the iris so it gave me a little bit more diffusion than having it right up against because when you when you install this that uh the back of the iris is going to be right here on this flat face. 
So just keep that in mind. You don't want anything, any of your lighting or blue or anything protruding out past that. But you can reset it back in as, as far as you've got room, right? And then in the back, I kind of backfilled in uh, with a little bit of hot glue. Actually, before I ever even put the lighting in the hole, I covered this whole back section with hot glue after I had got my wires on there just to make sure that there weren't, because there are points on here um, that will make contact. And I didn't want any of my other wires or, or battery or switch or anything accidentally making contact with one of those and shorting out. So I, I covered this whole thing with like, I don't know, a couple, two, three millimeters of hot glue just to make sure there was good isolation. There is a resistor on there, um, but it, it I ran this for I ran this ghost for a while and I didn't notice any issues with that overheating after being covered with hot glue. So it should be fine. Um, so after I got that kind of protected on the back, then I went ahead and put it into the ball and like I said recessed it a little bit not that far maybe just 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 enough just about right there I think you can see on the photos how far I did this is crooked because the spring is in the way but um, and yeah so just enough to get a little bit of glue in there to hold it in place so it wouldn't come forward and then put a little bit more hot glue in the back here um, and just kind of smeared it up the side so it would bond to the side of the hole to keep the battery or the lighting from falling out the other way. Then once that was in place, of course I had my wires coming out, uh, I hooked it up to the battery. So the battery situation is a little weird. It's a little janky. I'm not proud of it, but you know, it, it worked. I was able to scavenge something else. I found a, uh, a little headlamp well, it was really like a a light that was designed to clip onto the brim the front of the brim of a ball cap and this was i know i got this from walmart because that's the walmart brand logo there the ozark trail and it was not very expensive it was really cheap and i was able to scavenge a few things out of this you can kind of see that shape that it's got there is for mounting to the brim of a of a baseball cap and it had a plastic body. I don't have the re remains of that anymore to show you what that looked like, but it kind of just had like a, I don't know, kind of shaped like this and it went out, had a little clip underneath to clip under the, the, the brim of the cap. And then, you know, this little lighting circuit, of course, was all inside the plastic case. And then I had a little battery cover on the back that you could open up and it had just one uh, 2032 coin cell and did it have one i honestly don't remember no i think it might have had two in two little two little cells um and, and they were in like little molded in slots not really slots but just like cups that were molded into the plastic casing that the battery would sit inside and uh, it would have on one side it would have one of these contacts the battery would sit against that and then on the top, there was another positive contact that would come down and make contact. And of course, those were wired up to the, the LED. So I didn't end up using this. Obviously, I used this for my lighting because it's the right shape and size. Um, but I wanted to use the coin cell because I couldn't use, couldn't get away with using something like this. So um, fortunately, just one coin cell uh, ended up being sufficient to power this which is surprising but it works as you can see and so I'm pulling the cover off here in case I want to pull the battery out so you can see what I'm talking about um, where you can see the lighting down there glowing kind of a cool blue so this is a little uh, molded in cup that I was talking about that holds the the battery in place so I, I basically just kind of ripped that out of ripped the rest of the case away from it and just found the cup convenient and also the contact I used the contact underneath you can see the little tab on the contact here um, so you can see that little tab on the contact comes out this slot in the side and then bends down I 
daubed over it with hot glue just to make sure it doesn't accidentally touch anything else inside. But So that touches the bottom negative side of the battery and runs down to the negative contact on the light. And then for holding the battery in, this is gets super janky here. I just use this binder clip as like something to hold it against the bottom contact, but also serve as the positive contact. So I scraped away the paint on the part where it actually touches the top of the battery. <laughs> I soldered a wire right there, which was kind of tricky to do. And then uh, that positive wire runs to the switch. And then the other contact of the switch runs down to the lighting. So, like I said, it's really janky. I don't recommend doing this. There's probably better ideas for how to use a single coin cell. Like I said, this is a CR2032. I don't know if you can read that. CR2032 coin cell. And it powers this little LED just fine, even though this is only three, this is three volts, but this is designed to use 4.5 volts here. And usually three volts is barely enough to light an LED, so it's, uh, yeah, glad that worked. It works just fine. So there we go. There's my setup. Um, really, uh, really hacky, if you will, but it works. And I was able to kind of get by without having to order a lot of online components, electronic components. Oh, this uh, switch as well, this uh, slide toggle switch that I mounted in the back here came from this little baseball cap light. Um, it just had a big old slide switch thing on top that toggled that tiny little switch that was inside. So I was able to scavenge that switch to use for this. So if you can find something similar, then you get a battery compartment, you even get a battery, you get these little contact battery contacts, and you get the slide switch out of that. Um, I don't know if they make these things anymore. Maybe find something like that at a dollar store or something. But, um, but for the lighting itself, you can use something like this. I mean, honestly, if, if you're handy with electronics and you probably have experience soldering LEDs, this wouldn't be something too difficult to make. Um, you may even be able to find PCBs for just this sort of thing online somewhere. Um, but I'm mean, honestly, little flashlights like this are pretty ubiquitous and very inexpensive. They're really cheaply made, but you don't pay a lot for them. I mean, there's not much to them. So if you can find something like this that's it'll fit in a one inch hole, then you're golden. You've got what, exactly what you need. Um, you could swap that out for blue LEDs if you wanted to go blue on this, but I don't think that would give you the right blue. Usually blue LEDs are really deep blue. I don't think that would look quite right here, but if that's the look you're going for, hey, that's certainly an option, something you can do. So, um, let's see, anything else to say about lighting? The, the, the rear panel is you have to build that specifically for the lighting. If you haven't caught that in my other video, um, check that out. I show how to build this rear panel because you have to have this this uh, cylinder with that extra plate and there's actually a bracket behind that that's holding the toggle switch. You can see I have a toggle switch installed here that has the three contacts coming out the back. So that's ready to be attached to wiring. There's the toggle switch there. And so my other video shows you how to build that. You have to have this in order for the lighting to work, obviously, you gotta be able to turn it on and off. And you also be able to you need to be able to remove this rear panel so that you can get access to your batteries, right? And change those out. Or if you're not building for lighting, you actually just can glue that rear panel straight to the back and not have to worry about it. But um, I think that's the only other accommodation for lighting that you have to do. Uh, you have to prep the ball by adding the hole, of course, to drill the hole. Um, you have to do something that will give you the right color and brightness for your lighting um, and the blue effect there. And then uh, the rear panel and the actual lighting and wiring itself. So 
that is how I lit the ghost. You can probably figure out something much less janky than what I had, but I'm satisfied with the result. I think it looks great.